Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programs in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a program about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colorful. Maximize the flavor. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimize the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. And, well, you are very welcome. Listen, today I've got something which is really special. You know how now and again I say springboard, uh, to do things with springboarding? Well, this is really what this is about. I'm going to show you a very simple way of making an alternative burger, okay? And then uh, let you see just how far the whole imagination can spring you. If you've got really great ingredients and you really think about the taste and the smell and the aromas and colors and textures, it's just amazing what you can do. Um, look, this question of springboarding, can, can I just draw this out for you just a second? Um, it's rather like, um, you know, the, you've got a springboard like here and you've got a swimming pool. Let me see whether I can um, build you a swimming pool. Okay, there's a swimming pool. And you've got needs, um, which uh, your swimming pool is. So that represents needs in your family, okay? Now, um, here uh, goes somebody who's going to dive. So you run along and you jump onto this thing and, and <laughs> like this. And you do this dive over here. You're actually bouncing up and down on this, on this concept, this basic technique, and diving into your very own need. Now, um, um, my wife Trina, as we've talked several times, has got a 300-plus cholesterol if she's left alone, okay? And um, we don't leave alone for long. <laughs> and so it means that if I dive with a recipe into her swimming pool, I've really got to watch it. I've got to have low fat, low cholesterol, and, you know, low sodium, very much for her. Whereas in my case, I've got a 160 cholesterol, and uh, none of those normal problems with that. I can dive a little bit deeper, you see. I can take it there. Now, I've chosen to eat exactly the same way that Trina does, so that I've got us, I'm a buddy, you know, um, we're working on this thing together. So my swimming pool at the moment, I've chosen to be as though there are high risks in our family. And that's how I cook, and that's how I like to cook for you too. I don't know whether there are high risks for you, but at least why not sort of lay the groundwork for the best possible health you can have for your family, okay? Now, here's a burger. Uh, I mean, that surely is one of the things that can be fatty and greasy. This one truly isn't. It's got lots of lovely flavor with it. You want to have a go? Let's have a go. All right, now, it's going to be a chicken one, and, and you'll see just by how tenderly I handle it that it's different than the kind of, you know, slop up the burger and get on with it. This one is a tender burger. Now, uh, and I call it an ultra burger. Now, I'm putting in a little bit more oil than normal here because uh, you really don't want this to stick. This is a non-stick pan. But I want to be able to show you how you can be able to handle it so that it doesn't break up on you. Um, here then, th this actually works out to be about an eight ounce burger, but only about four ounces of that are the chicken itself. Now, you hear the little bit of a sizzle? That's on medium-low, so it's just underneath that. And I've done one so that it looks like a burger. And this one, if you just roll it on, just like, just roll it on. This is called a rissole. And just pop that in as well. Now, you, you start relatively low down on the heat level. And just give it just a little bit of a toss and just move it so that you know that it is going to move. Okay? There yeah. Just lift it up so that you've just got a little bit of the air running underneath it. And just give it a little shake, and it should... <laughs> you should not come close. Good. And just move that apart. That'll be fine. Now, when it's got to that level, now you can move that up in terms a little bit faster in order to get it to sort of cook through. Okay. 
Um, and since it's chicken, it needs to go through 140 degrees, must get past 140, really to 160 would be nice if you've got one of those little thermometer things. Doesn't really matter, don't worry about it, just so long as it's cooked right through. Here is a chicken. Now, if you buy a chicken like this one, about a three and a half pound chicken, and then bone it out and save yourself the trouble of boning the drumstick. You can just cut the drumstick off, wrap it up and freeze it for next time when you have drumsticks. Um, then you've got it down, you've got over 16 ounces of meat, which means, you know, really that you've got about a third less expense if you just take a few moments to actually bone it out. You'll, you'll cut it down by a third. That's a lot of money to save. All right. Now, I'm going to take um, a piece of this, that's the breast of that, and one of the thigh, um, that's the thigh, completely boned out, and put that other one away, you know, for another occasion, or you can double up on the whole thing and actually make it for four. And, um, but in this case, I want to put the breast and the thigh together and just pass a knife blade through it in order to be able to have a mix of the breast of chicken as well as the thigh. See, the thigh, because it actually does a lot more work, if you, th you know, think of a chicken sort of running around like this, the thigh meat has a lot more activity than the breast meat does. And because of that, it builds up a kind of collagen in it. And collagen is, um, is a sinewy combination which, um, which gives you that marvelous rich kind of feeling instead of uh, the breast which can dry out rather a lot. So you put the two together and um, just stick it in uh, a food processor or keep chopping. I mean, if you don't have a food processor, you, you can do it. Just take a sharp knife and just keep chopping it together and it'll actually work. But this goes really quite quickly. So if you dine it, uh, and this unit of mine is on seven, and I pulse it so that I, I give it about 12 pulses, that nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and I can see it. And it's an amazing thing how it takes the sinews, breaks them up, moves it in with the breast, and the whole thing becomes lovely and round and delicious. Okay, now just pop that into a bowl where I've got half a cup full of brown rice. Um, now, I if you don't want to go to the trouble of making the brown rice, then please just, you know, go ahead and make it white, sticky rice, whatever. I don't want to give you a whole problem, but if you're into brown rice, which is marvellous, has a nutty sort of feel to it, then do try that, all right? Now, see how that went over there like that? And now, pull that back together again. It's going to be loose as you turn it, and, but it's also extremely tender when you serve it. Okay, um, around there, and just roll that over. See, the rissole shape is when you're not serving it in a bun, and the round shape here is when you are going to serve that in a bun. Okay, good. Now, that's just still cooking through. This is um, mixed up. And now, back into this little machine again. And into the machine, uh, just one half, um, let me just get rid of this. You notice they always have a separate board. It's, it's a simple thing, but it, oh, if you go into a lot of trouble to get rid of, you know, discomfort, it's a very good idea not to sort of add to the discomfort by having a tummy ache. And sometimes if you don't watch it, you know, with a, the with a knife and everything else, you can have bits of chicken lying around and clean it off and you can be sure that you'll get rid of any potential problem. All right, um, just a little onion in there first and, uh, and just whiz the onion round. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay. That's enough just to break the onion up. Then take um, a, a tablespoonful of that uh, Dijon mustard. That's mustard with a little bit of wine juice added to it. It's lovely. It really is good stuff. And a tablespoonful of parsley stalks. Very important. And one tablespoonful, uh, two tablespoons full of parsley stalks and two tablespoons full of, of parsley. All right? I mean, that's, I, I want to try to make it as simple as I could. Um, eh, that's right. Okay. And then put the lid on the top and then just mix those two together so that the thing is completely whizzed up. If you go too much on this, you'll, you'll make it too wet and that's something of the problem that you'll have when it, it starts to hold together. Okay. Then, all you need to do then is just to combine the chicken and the seasoning. Now, can you, can you see the idea of the springboarding on this one? Um, there might be things that you would do slightly differently. 
Um, but so long as you follow this technique, you're going to have the quickest, freshest, lowest fat, greatest flavor hamburger you've had in a long time. It won't be a hamburger. I call it an ultra burger. Okay, good. Um, a little freshly ground pepper in there, um, just into the top, <coughs> and just a touch of salt. About a quarter of a teaspoon for each, actually. Um, we'll do it just fine for the two. Great. All right. Now, now, when this is done and you're just about ready to serve it, there are a number of things that you need to do first of all, <laughs> rather quickly. The first one is to get this burger out of here, and what you do is you serve that up, you know, on the bun in the typical way in which you would do that. All right, just slide it out there. Big one, you see. Now this one here, I'd like to put on one side because I want to show you that one a little bit later. And then take from the pan, just get a cloth and just a paper towel and just uh, soak up the extra fat that I put in at the beginning to save it. Okay, so now it's gone. And then take a quarter of a cupful of dealkalized wine. This is the, the dealkalized one, the one that's had the alcohol removed by cold fermentation so that you don't actually ruin the wine. And then with a flat-ended spurtle, just, just, you know, and the reason for the flat end, of course, is that you can get any residue on the bottom of the pan up and into there. Just take that and just drain that through. Now, you've lost absolutely nothing in terms of the total flavor that you've come off the pan. All right. Now, this is exciting. You then take... Um, a quarter of a cup of strained yogurt. And we've done so much of this strained yogurt thing, you know. And if, if you just join me, I have a book and you, you'll find it in the book. All right, and then you take this reduction here, which has come from the pan, and you pour a little of that onto the top. Now that's wine. And you just stir that in together and then add to that. <laughs> you, see, you see, it'll look lumpy, but don't worry. If you keep stirring it, it'll just do fine. And then you stir into that a couple of teaspoonfuls of horseradish. If you, uh, if you like horseradish, you know that has that magnificent bite to it. So just a couple of teaspoonfuls of horseradish there, and it does the most sensational job as a sauce that goes over the top of this hamburger. So then I would place a little of that on there, first of all. Just, just a, a good dollop of it. Get a, a, a lovely slice of tomato and just rest that on the top there. Get a marvelous piece of greenery on the side. Where's the rest of the bun? And just place the rest of the bun just like that. A little freshly ground pepper over the top of the plate. Looks great. Ready for it? OK, let's have a look at the numbers. Power off. <laughs> Here we go. There. Now, there, there is a little burger. Yeah. And we've springboarded. You see, that would be so good for somebody who's really got to sort of watch it a little bit in the family. Or if you've decided that you're well and don't want to get sick, this is just the job. I've compared this to a classic hamburger. That's a fast food hamburger and uh, without any French fries. And I come up with 354 calories as against 709. And 43 grams of fat, my you know, that's two-thirds of what I need, not Trina, but I need for the whole day. So that's down to eight. Saturated fat is down to two from 14. Percentage of calories from fat from 54 goes all the way down to 20%. That's great stuff. Cholesterol is only 64, as distinct from 110. And the sodium is 532, and dietary fiber is 5. I love it when I see that fiber going up, and that's because we put in the rice into that. Okay, now, <laughs> I'm oh, why not? Um, so then, as you see, you've got a wonderful... Uh, oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Now, I've always wondered what the green leaf was for. No, <laughs> no, no. That's bang on. It really is neat. Mm, um, you'll, you'll enjoy that. Now, don't forget to springboard from that, um, as I'm going to do now. 
What I'm going to do is take the same concept of that, make it totally vegetarian, right, and exciting at the same time. And that, that's, uh, that's possible, you know. You ready? <laughs> okay, come on, I'll show you how it's done. All right, now, now this one is just sensational. I, I can't plead with you more than to try this one. This is wonderful. Okay, two pans on the heat, um, and uh, let me see. <laughs> oh, yes, this one. <laughs> you always, just a little bit more than normal, just like before, and you can blot it out of the pan so it's not going to add anything more to the dish in terms of fat content. Um, a, a little paintbrush that you keep for nothing else but doing this. And... <laughs> Then these, you'll see, are really different from the ones before. Just shoot those in. Again, the pan uh, on just that low heat. Roll them in. These will stick together until doomsday. <laughs> these have such, they have such body in them. It's just great. Um, so now push those around. Just uh, bring the heat of the pan up to sort of midway point, whatever it is with you, just medium heat. No point in just going full bore cherry red elements, it just doesn't work. So, okay, that's doing nicely. Now, um, other pan here, just put a, a, just a teaspoonful of oil in there to be able to heat it up, and whiz over here. Um, a, a, an onion, and you could, if you really wanted to, sit down and finely chop the onion. In this case, I like it finely chopped and melted into a tablespoonful of curry powder. Now, I know that I am a big, make a big deal sometimes about making your own curry powder, as they do in India. And I mean, it, it is. It's a wonderfully created process. But look, if you do this, just pulse the onion and the curry powder together, what you come up with is already a sort of combination of the ruptured oil sacs and the curry powder at the same time. And it, it really gives you an extraordinary uh, taste. Now, here, then, you see what it looks like. I haven't made a mush out of it again. It's just enough to be able to break it up finely. And that is placed into the pan. And instantly, that, that starts to happen. I put that over here. I need it. Need it. Um, instantly, that the whole room will be filled with the smell of this curry powder. If you just go out and look for one which has got the word Madras on it. That's, that's not a brand name. It's a style of curry powder that I happen to like very much. And if you like it too, then we could start on the same score. All right. Um, Twelve-ounce can of red kidney beans. By the way, this is for two when, when you think that there's a possibility that your husband, say, or your son, would not in a fit eat a vegetable-only burger. Huh? And you want to give him something big enough to be able to chew. This is it. Then, just here, four tablespoonfuls of, of raisins. Now, the raisins, I mean, can you imagine already how this is going to taste? It's got a sweet taste, the smoothness of the beans are, are going in there, too. A, a tablespoonful of parsley. Now, it lifts the color a little bit, so now you're getting up into color. <laughs> oh, I mean, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? There. And, um, and it's all beginning to start to do its aromatic thing. Um, a lemon, okay? Now, lemon here, cut in half, roll the lemon always if you really want to get, you know, the most out of it. About this time, you can flop them over. They need about, uh, like the other ones, I don't think I mentioned the other ones, they need about four minutes either side. And uh, just the question of heating this one through. And then just uh, press it down and let's get an uh, a lemon without any, any seeds in it. <laughs> There's a seed which is caught up somewhere there. That's good, because when it doesn't come out, you know that it has a seed which caught up. <laughs> so, then, just, you know, get a whole <laughs> thing. Oh, well. Um, if it has a few seeds in it, that's just tough. Um, and <laughs> No, it didn't. That's all right. Uh, then just simply stir that. The and you get to feel the lemon juice moving in it, too. All right. Now, then, when it's all combined, you get the small... <laughs> I need the blades first. Never fill it up without the blades first. It doesn't work very well. And then just, uh, just toss the beans and the seasoning into the top of the 
little mini processor. And you get a, a larger processor, fine, but um, I don't. This is the size of mine, and uh, I find it does perfectly well for my family. Okay, um, let's just pop this onto the top. Make sure it fits. There's nothing like whirling this thing off into space. <laughs> I'm going to get this. You know, I would be so good. I'm really going to volunteer for NASA. I would be so good, especially retrieving satellites. One, there we go. Um, this is pulsed about 12 times. You can watch it from the side and see it go down. Don't make a puree out of it. The whole thing has got to come down to this marvelously textured mix. Look at that. Look. And that with the beans and add to the rice. You remember how we did this the other day? I don't know whether you saw that the other day. But what I did, I actually managed to, to convince myself, <laughs> which is important to begin with, you know, you put beans and rice together, you make a complete protein because beans aren't a complete protein in themselves. But in this case, they, they, the moment they get together, hey, hey, we're complete kind of thing as, as you're going around in the bowl. Mix it together. And then just get, um, uh, the, way, the way you do this with either of the, of the, of the burgers is just to get a small um, mix like that and just tap it. And it comes out into a, a very easy way to be able to smooth it out to make a round patty. All right. Good. Now, let's get these out of the pan. These are done. Um, I'm going to lift this one out and serve this one over here. We'll get back to that in a moment and show you what that looks like. But you see they're real different colors. Let's put that one over there. And then in the pan, just heat the pan up just a little bit more and take a quarter of a cup of the dealkalized, you know, slightly sweet wine there, enough to be able to deglaze the pan and get it boiling down really well. Now. In the final analysis here, I've got this thing called a pop, you know, the perfume of the plate, two cloves, quarter of a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper, some cardamom seeds, quarter teaspoonful of cardamom seeds, a teaspoonful of cumin seeds, and that is just a little bit of, of turmeric. And just pop all of those into the sort of the whiz kid and start to sort of move that around. Now, I've got a tablespoon, of a, I've got a quarter of a cup of the strained yogurt here. And all I need to do is just to take this powdered slush. I mean, it is terrific stuff. Just put a little bit of that in there. This is what I call the miracle of doing this kind of, of food. And then just a little bit of a teaspoonful of the dill over the top. Marvelous flavor. Mix all of that together with just a little drop of the wine, which is coming from the deglazing of the pan, where you just pop it into the top like that and just stir that in. That becomes an incredible sauce that you can then serve over the top of each one of those rissoles. Now, that's a rissole now rather than a burger. So it falls over that, and you don't have the bun, and if you don't have the bun, amazing things happen to the total calories. So that's what it looks like there on the dish um, as a, something that you could serve without the bun. And here is the classic. There's the burger. That's the thing we've been competing with. Now, let's have a look and have a look and see what that number turns out to be. 709 calories. Remember the last time, just exactly the same. 310, this one. Except if you take the bun out of the thing, then you can drop it by 100. Um, the fat is 43 grams in the original, down to four. Uh, saturated fat is only one of those grams of fat is saturated. And then that means the percentage of calories from fat is only 12% for a burger. It's amazing. Cholesterol, one. I wish I could have been a zero, but it's a one. And then sodium is 484. Dietary fiber is whoopee, 10. I mean, I made a perfect 10 on fiber. I've been trying that for some time. Okay, now, so serve it if you really want to cut down on, you know, the, serve them together. Serve the two that I made together so that you've got the chicken and, oh. Now, I don't want to be over-impressed over with myself, you know. I always have a trouble when I get here. 
but you've got to try this one. This vegetable one is just a knockout. Remember, one milligram of cholesterol. Right down on fat. It's just the thing for family, especially when you want to try this kind of thing out. Okay? Minimize the risk, maximize the flavor, and have fun. It's always the best ingredient that ever was. Okay? See you next time. God bless you.